Hey everybody, it's February 2022, and yesterday I discovered that the BattleBot fight, Valkyrie vs. Triple Crown, is going to be published to YouTube tomorrow. I guess tomorrow for some people, and a little later for others. That was unexpected. After the event, I saw a list of fights and episodes, and nowhere did I see Triple Crown. That was perfectly fine. We are a backup team. We were never intended to be part of the normal rotation of robots. In fact, until yesterday, Triple Crown didn't even have a web page on the BattleBot website. Regardless, I have a video, which is the last video of my build series, and it was taken the day before we went to Vegas. I would like to attach that to the end here, and it will provide the list of parts and pieces we had, what our goals were, other things about the state of the robot. It will, however, be missing a lot of context because there's several, several, maybe 20 videos over the previous two months where the assembly and the design and the construction of the various parts are gone over in detail and it'll be glossed over in the last video. Hey everybody, this is it. This is the last video for the build sequence for Triple Crown, at least for this event. Now the most important thing that you should get out of this video is cool shirt. My wife made this for me. This is the Terra Engineering logo here. I gotta make sure that gets focused on. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the team logo is in the back, all embroidered by my wife. Well, she had a machine, but she programmed it and and did all the thread changes and everything. Super cool. But, okay. What I wanted to do with this video is I wanted to cover what's been going on recently. And there tomorrow is Vegas, and I am going, but there's a story behind that. We need to go back, clear back to December of last year, and I'm going to try not to make it too long, but so December of last year, I decided to take on a task for NASA, and that task was supposed to end about three months before BattleBots, and that was going to be just about right. I had a working uh, drive and steering and a frame and there were things I needed to do, but software was in place, the communication stuff was in place, and three months was going to work just fine. But it's the government and if you're with NASA or the DOD or other government agencies, things run over. And I ended up spending an extra month on the pro project and suddenly three months became two months. And of course, what you do is you triage, right? You go, oh crap, I can't do everything I wanted to do. Now, what was on the plate was to have another weapon and to have four defensive pieces I was going to build an anti-vertical, an anti-horizontal, a anti-hammer, and an anti-flipper. I had designs for everything in CAD, but some of them were pretty exotic and needed a lot of work. Triage. The anti-hammer went away and the anti-flipper went away. Just the anti-horizontal left and the anti-vertical left. Okay. So, gonna start going and heading on and getting ready for, ready for BattleBots. 
And then the electric stuff hit the fan. And it was all because of this guy. And that's kind of a lie. Actually, it's all because of me. I started using three-phase motors maybe three or four years ago. These, these small, powerful ones, they were sort of new. And, I mean, power per weight, really cool. When I started using them and analyzing them, I used my three-phase motor handbook from college. And that was a three-phase industrial motor handbook. It turns out that the companies that do hobby motors spec their motors differently than industrial motors. Industrial motors are on a per phase basis normally, and the hobby motors are per motor. And that means my calculations for KV and KT were both off by a factor of the square root of three, 1.732. Now, how did I find this out? Well, I was driving around my uh, frame, zipping it along, and I thought, oh, you know what I should do? I should up its current limits, I had it set pretty low, and add a bunch of weight, because the current frame was maybe 140 pounds, and so I wanted to see how it would handle at 250. I reprogrammed the controllers, increased the current limit on them and then added uh, actually I didn't even add the weight and I started driving it around and it was a lot zippier which was cool and then I slowly ran it up to a wall and punched it and the wheels didn't spin and that was a shock the wheel I mean I have really sticky tires on it but no way that that was the case you need, in BattleBots, you need 1G. You should have more than 1G, and I'm kind of shortchanging this robot by cutting the power down. I don't have enough weight to do really powerful drive. But at least it needs to be able to spin the tires at, one, at 1G at 250 pounds, and it was nowhere near. So I went, oh crap. Now the obvious solution, the one that I would love to have taken would be to buy a different motor that has a different KV. And if I could do that, then it could be a drop-in replacement if I could get the same size motor. Drive-wise, nobody makes a... I needed a 90 KV roughly, a 90 KV motor, and nobody makes a 90 KV in that size. So. I looked and I could get one custom wound, but there's no way I could get it in time for BattleBots. Uh, I found a 140 kV motor and I ordered that, but that's still not enough. Fortunately, I had a 60 kV motor the size of the steering motor, and I had those custom wound for another project. Unfortunately, I only have three of them, and that was only enough for a single robot. So I swapped those in, and that made the steering cool, but I had to completely redesign the drive, uh, the, the drive gearing in order to get the torque I needed, and that was terrible. That took me three weeks, because. Uh, if you remember the design videos, it's packed in there, and you can't just move things around willy-nilly. So I ended up having to get some custom uh, pinion gears, not custom, they were uh, pinion gears that I then made custom by remachining them, and put all that together, and that took me about three weeks. After that, uh, I was like, uh, okay, triage again. No new, no second weapon. And I had to pick between anti-vert and anti-horizontal defense. And I picked 
the anti-vert because I think there's more vertical spinners than there are horizontal spinners but you know it's a numbers game it's just random chance so from there I started working on finishing up the weapon and working on the the anti-vert uh, design not design I had the design manufacturing it about two weeks ago I was getting ready to drive I try and drive regularly and I turned the system on and smoke started coming out of one of the steering motors and uh, I only have three of them 60 kV they were a special wine no way to get more and I thought oh crap so I thought well maybe I can try uh, maybe I can try a different motor on them uh, maybe it won't steer when fully loaded I might have to be moving but you know maybe it might work and so I ordered uh, some uh, other motors and I just kept going All right. uh, about a week ago I got those new motors in and every single one of the new motors the uh, hall sensors do not work they don't work for my uh, speed controllers and <laughs> it's like oh crap so I have the 360 kV motors in and the smoked one is still in and still appears to be working but I have no backups and I suspect that motor is going to go so about a week ago I called BattleBots and I just said I'm sorry I'm not coming I I just you know I had a chance and and I can't get sufficient backups and this motors I mean I don't want to go and just have everything go up in flames and uh, they said okay we'll mark you off and then uh, I got a call from Greg Munson and Greg said hey you know what things might work you don't know that uh, you might think of something while you're here you should just come you should be just come because you know it's been he knows it's been 18 years since I've been at BattleBots and you should just come and and enjoy the the builders and the ambiance and it's in Vegas and that's gonna be cool uh, 110 degrees in the shade is not cool but you know he was right he was absolutely right and I just said you know what my robot is actually working right now theoretically and I have enough pieces to put together a robot and put it in the ring and I'm not gonna learn anything until this robot gets hit right I have done what what I've thought of so far but until I get hit and you know somebody smashes into me or some big hitter hits me I'm not gonna learn a thing so if I can put it together and get in the ring and get it hit I'm gonna learn something and that's better than sitting on my ass at home wishing I was there now of course if I get a <laughs> if I get a big horizontal spinner <coughs> excuse me if I get a big horizontal spinner I have nothing I have no defense against horizontal spinners they're just gonna obliterate me and I guess I'll learn something from that too but uh, here let so let's show you what I do have and uh, what what I'm hoping to field and and hopefully get a chance to use now I'm gonna zoom in a little here So this is my horizontal spinner 
Uh, and it's compact. It doesn't have a lot of reach, but it's, it's pretty fast. There are what I call shoes, and these are uh, water jet out, and the shoes, they only go on one way because the water jet matches really carefully. So, so they go on like that, and then once they get hit and damaged, then I replace them. The drive is a friction drive. And so it's pretty strong there, but it, it's essentially spring-loaded into the titanium axle. And I've got a pretty strong motor in this, about uh, 20 kilowatts. I don't think I'm going to be using 20 kilowatts worth because I don't think I have the battery capacity. But if I use, uh, you know, 8 kilowatts worth of the 20 kilowatt motor, I'll be happy. Still, compared to what I've had before, that's a lot of power. I did finish two copies of the Antivert. And for those of you who've seen the design video on this, uh, I'm very curious to see if this is going to work. So a combination of single pivot and a four bar mechanism. And the idea is to drive it into a vertical, and if my dynamics are correct, it should do some very interesting things if you drive it into the vertical. I welded together, like in three hours, some pieces I had cut uh, for other things. And these are little horseshoe things that bolt around the wheels and they are pretty lightweight aluminum and they're just going to get absolutely shrecked if, uh, if they get hit by anything strong. But, you know, they're, they're really lightweight and, and uh, uh, that's, that's the other funny thing is since I, since I haven't had time to make Let's go back up here. Sorry, sorry for yanking you around. Since I haven't had time to make all of the parts and pieces, I'm gonna be way underweight. I, I just don't have, the idea of Triple Crown was to have three things on the robot, but I don't have three things, right? The, the big spinner here, I can't put two of those on. Uh, they weigh too much to have two of those. And I really don't have anything else, right? Uh, the idea was if I'd have had more time, I would have made more attachments. So I think it's gonna look kind of weird with only two of the three positions filled. What? Whatever, right? I'm going to BattleBots. I'm gonna enjoy myself. Hopefully my wife loves to tool around Vegas and look at, of all things, cards and quilt stores. She's going to have a good time, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I will do my best, and... Oh, by, oh, by the way, Greg said that they would try and find me one fight. And so that's, that's where I am. One fight. Uh, if I can get it together and make it work, then... Hopefully I can get that one fight. Even if I don't, being around all the builders and looking at what they're doing is, is going to be an experience and will get me re-enthused for getting back there. So if you've taken this journey with me and you've gone through all these build videos, well, thank you very much. Hopefully you've learned something. And until next time, if I go at this again sometime or I do something else, thanks for watching.